So now I want to talk about parallel LEDs right there. It's best to give them their own protective resistor as you see there. So, um, you know, that's kind of all we really need to uh, say in this video, but uh, I'm going to explain more why. So we have uh, five volts at the supply, 220 ohms of resistance for each LED right there. They're going to drop a couple of volts, but you got three volts divided by 220 ohms. I think the math comes out to somewhere around like 13 milliamps of current. And there, that actually lines up right there. Before it was saying 24. This isn't as accurate as a multimeter. Um, so, in any case, we got about 13 milliamps of current going through uh, both LEDs. I can uh, show that uh, if I yank one, uh, current goes down in half right there. 13 milliamps of current. So, in any case, we could uh, parallel these two red LEDs and uh, probably be okay. One of them is naturally brighter than the other. I think uh, probably the one that is a little bit dimmer looks like it's the one on the right. I abused. Um, but, uh, in any case, not, you know huge difference right there but uh, now you're going to see again 12 13 milliamps of current through the two of them that's because leds drop some voltage and then um, the voltage that remains goes across the resistor doesn't matter how many you put in parallel so as you keep putting them in parallel they're going to divide up uh, the current hopefully they have the exact same forward voltage though otherwise you could run into problems so Again, we have enough resistance for one LED. I can plug the other one. Hopefully you notice that one got brighter because it's got twice the amount of current flowing through it. And as you can see, it's not a huge difference. So you could go, you know, probably uh, closer to six milliamps of current right there. And uh, the LED will probably be bright enough. Um, so they don't get twice as bright if you put twice as much current through them. But these red LEDs, um, you know, they especially if you're competing with the blue ones you kind of need to get a fair amount of current so now i'm going to put the uh i can put the blue one down here there you can see it lights up so i'm not putting it in backwards if you put it in backwards it won't light up something to be aware of if you're new to leds you got to put them in the right way anode the long lead towards the positive supply and cathode the short lead towards the negative supply but you need a resistor to limit current so yeah now we got it in the way that it will conduct but i put it next to the red led it does not light up. It did not light up uh, also because I put it in the right spot. There we go. It does not light up when you parallel it to the red LED. So they need to have, you know, the same forward uh, voltage in order for both of them to light up, which we saw with the uh, red one next to that one. One may have had a slightly uh, higher or lower forward voltage, but it does get influenced by how much current is flowing through as well. So there is some balancing effect. Um, but here you can see the blue LED has a three volt forward voltage. The red LED has a two volt forward voltage. The uh, voltage will never build up enough for any current to flow through the blue LED unless the red LED burns out or something. And this may be why you might use a couple uh, LEDs like parallel. Maybe uh, you wanna know if that one burnt out, you know, stopped conducting basically like it's not there. You got another one that lights up. So every once in a while, you will have like a parallel circuit like this where you want uh, the alarm to notice that you got more voltage than you should because a semiconductor is not dropping voltage. But when it comes to just the uh, basic circuits, there you can see, you could run into problems. So again, I have that resistor to protect one LED just fine. So it's fine that we light it. That's less than 20 milliamps of current. But let's say uh, we don't want to go above uh, 6 milliamps of uh, current through uh, one LED for whatever reason. So we got uh, these two parallel and uh, right now they got, uh, you know, six milliamps of current each through them. It's combined right there. Each one's got half of the total current. Uh, if that's the maximum we want to set for whatever reason. And now one of them burnt out for whatever reason, the other one's passing the full uh, current. So um, again, this is not a huge problem. That's why it's kind of a an odd example right here i can't uh you know it's kind of hard to demonstrate that uh you know uh, a component failed and it like fried another one did damage to another one um but uh over long periods of time too much current through a component will uh, finally uh burn it out or whatever so if you're counting on uh two components passing current and then one of them fails, the other one gets all of the current uh, for whatever reason, then, you know, it's going to have a shortened life. So something to be aware of whenever you're designing circuits. So 
any case, uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen, and check out the links down below. They all help a lot. I'll see you in the next video.